In this video trade, we're going to look at adding another angle to your head and shoulders trade. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for tuning in. All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the head and shoulders trade, the head and shoulders, and how we can add another angle to it and look at it a little bit differently than perhaps we have been to maybe increase the success rate of it. Now, as I've said many times, if you're a subscriber, appreciate your support, by the way. You know, you cannot take a price action pattern or a technical analysis pattern on its own. It's how it fits in with the bigger picture. Uh, it's what's happened before, it's what's happened in the previous week, etc., etc. And so very often we'll look at kind of a textbook head and shoulders and say it doesn't work. Well, yes, because you're looking at it in the wrong context. If it's in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a range, it's not going to be that useful. However, under certain conditions, this is telling you something. And a lot of people go, oh, head and shoulders, you know, this is a rubbish pattern. Uh, but it's about thinking about what's going on behind the scenes here. And this is why we're going to add another layer on in a moment. So the head and shoulders is, you know, understanding that the first high is made, the second high is made, and then the third high is a struggle to break the high. So it's telling you that the buyers aren't as aggressive. It's telling you that maybe the sellers are stepping in a little bit earlier this time. It's showing that potentially there's a change in sentiment. Potentially something's happened and the kind of textbook stuff is that you're shorting what's called the neckline as it breaks back through there. Now, this is a nice pattern when you think about it. It gets overused and it kind of gets thrown around a little bit too much. But, you know, fundamentally that idea of new high, new high, struggling to get to new high is a nice foundation to build from. Is it enough on its own to take a trade? I think it could be depending on the position, but let's add another layer into it. Let's give it an extra bit of edge, add another angle. So look at this chart here. Oh, and by the way, we could also have, you know, I've drawn that symmetrically, that high there. Uh, very often that's not the case. The point of the, of the head and shoulders is that you've got the neckline, however you draw that. It's the, it's not necessarily the symmetry between the two shoulders, because uh, that one there is slightly higher. So either of those are head and shoulders, uh, just to make that clear. Right, so adding another dimension. So another dimension is to see where the head and shoulders occur. And I quite like, I much, very much like this kind of setup because it combines two different things to me. So imagine you've got your daily chart here and imagine you've already drawn a level of resistance there because of this cluster here. So decent level of resistance, maybe it's gone back further, but it's a level of resistance there. Maybe it's an all time high, maybe it's a high, some key level. Then again, it's confirmed by a tag here. And bear in mind, guys, let's not be hindsight players here, traders. Let's look at how we would visualize this and see this as the right hand of the chart was moving along. It's all very well, I was standing here and going, well, look, you know, look, I was drawing a whiteboard, we short here. For a world, we know it's not like that. So let's imagine how we're looking at it. Now we see a breakout. Now, many people are gonna take that breakout and, and that's fine. Um, and many people are gonna kind of wait and see what happens. Many people are gonna get stopped out by shorting it there, fine, whatever. We're looking at the next subsequent trade that sets up from that. So when we get the breakout that comes back to here, right at this point in time, you know, let's not, let's not kid ourselves, it's still bullish. Forget that, you just seen that's a pullback to the breakout level, it's still super bullish here. Now, when it dips under, and rejects that completely now we're talking. So for me, from this perspective onwards is where things start to change. Possibly a little bit lower because we sometimes get a little tickle below that level, don't we? So this is how things are changing. Now, when we come down, and this isn't supposed to be symmetrical guys, these lows here, but the, we get in the low, then we get a retest. And this is the kind of fundamental thing that I want to point out is it's often the second part of the process or the second confirmation, confirmation is not the right way, it's the second pattern, if you like, that gives us more of a clue than the first. It's like when we're buying a fresh low, that's no good. It's the second test that finds some support that gives us the clue. First low is the support saying we might be bottoming here. The second low and that fails and comes back through is the one that says, okay, actually we are, there's the level, there's people sticking to it, gives us what we need. So here we've got the low comes in, pushes back up, and now it's starting to fail and it's starting to respect this level that we'd had before. And so this is where it gets interesting because yes, traditionally that's just head and shoulders is just this, but when we position it and we start to see uh, shoulders, top of shoulders in line with prior resistance, this is where it gets interesting because now we're saying that yes, it's a head and shoulders, a nice pattern on its own when we look at it, what it's what under, under means on the underlying. 
or when you, sorry, when you, when you see what's happening under the bonnet, so you're lifting up and you're saying, okay, well, new highs failed, etc. But now we've got this key level here, we're saying actually this becomes more of a combo trade, that this is just a fake out. This is a bull trap that's sucking people in, not only because it's breaking the high of the shoulder, fine, but it's also because it's breaking the high of a previous key level. So we're adding a double kind of whammy to the trade. And then it's confirmed by rejecting it, it's pushing up, it's then struggling to go back up it again. And at this point now, you know, we can trade it like a traditional head and shoulders. We can kind of look to short on the, on the neckline, but for me, because we've added this extra layer in, we can be a little bit more clever with it. I think we can kind of look and say, well, actually, why don't I leverage on the fact that that resistance level is there and trade that and look to fade that as it starts to stall there because your risk reward is a bit more quantified. Obviously, your stop's gonna be above that head. You can then get extra aggressive and start to add to the trade as it comes through the neckline and then look for kind of, you know, very low moves because ultimately this is a bigger, broader pattern that's probably likely to take out that last swing low there because of the nature of it and play it like that. If it starts to mess around and do nothing for a few days there, you'd probably cut it and take your profits and, and walk away. But the point is guys is that yes, the head and shoulders is, is, is useful because of what it's telling us. But when we add an extra angle to it, an extra layer into it by leverage on the fact that the shoulder is stalling at a prior resistance level, then it becomes more of an interesting trade for me. It becomes something that's got an additional edge to it. It becomes something that's combining the head and shoulders with the bull trap, and I like that kind of thing, and it's the sort of thing that you can look out for. And this works, guys, on an intraday basis as well. That's why I'm doing this video, actually. I spotted one the other day, uh, intraday, where we're kind of struggling to get above, struggling to get above, and I hadn't actually visualized the head and shoulders, I'm gonna be honest with you, at that point in time, I'd just seen the fake out move. I was already at a bearish thesis, I had some sort of uh, idea of a target down here for whatever it was. I'd seen the move uh, move down and then we'd kind of st stuck in this little pattern and this poke above. And then afterwards I thought, actually, you know what, there's a head and shoulders within that. And so within this context of the bull trap here, which is quite a nice trade on its own, the fact that you've got the head and shoulders means that perhaps you can frame it easily and it's easier to spot for those of you who are already trading the head and shoulders. All right, guys, I hope that's helped. I'll see you next one. Keep the risk manager, whatever you do. Bye-bye.